And I ask unanimous consent that the amendment be considered as read. The gentleman is now recognized for five minutes on the amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. This committee has, has been extremely supportive uh, over the years uh, to the South Florida Ecosystem Restoration Program. Uh, I want to particularly thank um, the Chairwoman Captor and Ranking Member Mr. Simpson for being, Mr. Simpson has been the, really, frankly, the champion uh, for all of, of all of us in Florida for so many years on Everglades restoration. Again, this funding goes directly for Everglades restoration and enjoyed, it enjoys wide bipartisan support in Congress and clearly in the state of Florida. I am so proud to be uh, co-chairman of the House Everglades Caucus with my colleague from South Florida, uh, Congresswoman uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. I, along with my Florida colleagues, actually all of those Florida colleagues in this, in this committee, sent a letter to the administration earlier, earlier this year requesting $725 million for this critical line item. Um, now, this, why that number? Well, this number was consistent with the, uh, what we believed at the time was the Army Corps' ability to use it and was consistent with Everglades, uh, all the stakeholders, uh, their request level. And it would bring the restoration of the Everglades much closer to being finally completed. Now, unfortunately, um, the administration uh, number uh, in their budget request was far, far short of that. I frankly expected the administration to be more, more assertive in their request for Everglades funding. Every Floridian knows that, that the Everglades is central to our ecological and economic health and survival. It's a source of drinking water for 8 million Floridians. Now, at a time when this administration is touting infrastructure, access to clean water, and natural climate solutions, frankly, this should be their poster child. And as I said before, I was expecting the administration, the administration to be more, more assertive. Furthermore, strong funding for this program brings jobs to Florida. The Army Corps calculates that full funding for this program could add anywhere between 65 and 70,000 jobs. 65 to 70,000. Additionally, the state of Florida has already invested $4.5 billion into Everglades restoration. Now, we, I, I remind folks that, that there's a 50-50 cost share mandate uh, and yet the state has done uh, 4.5 million. The federal government is lagging behind at 1.7 billion. Again, I, I am grateful for this committee for, for the generosity, but again, we're lagging behind. So my amendment will begin to rectify this by adding an additional 375 million to the Army Corps construction account. That's the level that many of us requested for, uh, requested in writing. Uh, focusing that funding into environmental restoration is key. With this funding, it is my hope that the administration would utilize the boost to direct it to South Florida, to the South Florida Ecosystem Restoration. The energy efficiency and, re and renewable, renewable energy account that this funding is pulled from in the bill enjoys a 32 percent increase over last year, or $906 million. Reducing it by $375 million still gives you an, an, the, that account a 19 percent increase. So again, uh, to be, to be fair, there's now some conflicting responses that we've got as to how much can actually be spent. Um, I believe that we could clearly do more. The number uh, that I'm requesting is 375. Uh, Madam Truman, I'm, I'm getting now uh, reports from the state of Florida uh, uh, as to exactly what that amount is. But anyways, that's, that is my amendment. Uh, I'm hoping that the, the uh, committee would consider it. It's coming from a source uh, that is still going to have a huge increase in funding. I yield back at this time. Ms. Kapsir? I rise in opposition to the gentleman's amendment, and I know it's well-intentioned. Uh, we have members across the uh, room today who would like to increase accounts. Our subcommittee would actually need a greater allocation to accommodate fully all of the requests we are receiving coast to coast. So we have to be fair to everyone. This amendment would actually cut the Department of Energy's Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy by $375 million and then shift those dollars to the Corps of Engineers construction account by the same amount, ostensibly, to provide that funding to the South Florida Ecosystem Restoration Program. Now, I recognize the importance of the South Florida Ecosystem Restoration Program to protect and preserve the unique watersheds of the Florida Everglades. And I would note that 
the bill before us today would increase funding for that effort by 40 percent, 40 percent above last year. And last year, it received a very, very sizable increase. So the funding in the bill currently would increase it over $100 million over last year. However, the use of the Energy Efficiency Renewable Energy Program as an offset is simply unacceptable. First and foremost, this amendment would harm our efforts to combat the climate crisis by reducing the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy by $375 million. That is a 10 percent cut across that program. This amendment would in no way also guarantee Mr. diaz billards wishes of putting these funds toward the Florida Everglades. The funds made available under this amendment would be available to any environmental restoration core project which would be at the discretion of the administration. Furthermore, the Everglades has received $350 million in this year's budget, a 40 percent increase or $100 million over last year. And indeed, if you look back over the last three years, there are significant increases for the Everglades projects consistently. So the current proposal um, uh, represents 18 percent of the President's budget request for the core construction and 13.5 percent of the House funding for core construction, showing a significant commitment to this project in any case. So while I agree that the Everglades is a priority effort for our country, it is not the only place in our country that needs attention. And I oppose the amendment and urge my colleagues to oppose it as well. Mr. Simpson. I thank you, Madam Chairman, and I support the diaz art amendment. Uh, I am well aware of the importance, in fact, have been one of the primary supporters in Congress of the Everglades Restoration Project. It is the biggest environmental restoration project in the world. It's a huge undertaking and requires significant federal and state investments. We think, I think we should put as much money into it as, they can, as the Army Corps can spend. If you will all notice the news that has been recently reported that the red tide in uh, Florida is earlier this year than it's ever been before. And it causes significant damage uh, to Florida and to their environment. And uh, doing the Everglades project and restoration of the Everglades project is vitally important uh, to restoring the environment in California. Again, it, or excuse me, in Florida. Well, California too. You guys need the water. <laughs> but it is, uh, it is again where this money is being taken from that is uh, of concern to uh, the, the chairwoman. It would not decrease the funding for EERE. It would decrease the proposed funding for, DE, for EERE. Even with this amendment being adopted, EERE would still go up 19 percent from last year. Let me repeat that. It would still go up 19 percent from last year. This is what we're talking about is creating a more balanced bill that addresses the immediate needs uh, and this is certainly one of them. I would uh, support this amendment and I would urge others uh, to support it also. I yield back. Are there any other members wishing to be heard on the amendment? I'm sorry. Ms. Wasserman Schultz. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I rise to express my views on this amendment offered by my friend from Florida. And I appreciate the intent of my friend's amendment. I, too, would like to secure a more substantial increase in funding for Everglades restoration. It remains a top priority in this bill. But as the gentleman knows, uh, I've been working to secure Everglades restoration funding throughout my almost 20 years in Congress, along with our other fellow Floridians on this subcommittee uh, and on this committee. But unfortunately, this amendment is not the proper way to accomplish this goal, as it will not guarantee that that money will actually be used for Ever Everglades restoration. This is a discretionary account that the gentleman is proposing to transfer this money in, and the Corps has the ability to spend it on any other, uh, any environmental pro project that they wish. So they're, we're not actually moving money for Everglades restoration with this amendment. What I'd like to propose to my friend, Mr. diaz Ballard, is that we continue working together as co-chairs of the Everglades Caucus. That is the most effective way for us to secure funding for this critical project in our state. 
Originally, Everglades restoration was to include 60 projects that would be, would be completed over 30 years at a cost of $8.2 billion. Since its authorization in 2000, it is now estimated that it will take 50 years at a total cost of $23.2 billion to complete. This is because the federal government, as the gentleman mentioned, has consistently shortchanged its 50-50 share of the project. The state of Florida has invested far more than half at this point. The more we withhold funding for this project, the longer and more expensive it becomes. Investing now means saving later. And that is why I have been absolutely baffled and frustrated by the Army Corps' recent decision making. According to the Corps' latest forecast, the agency needs $2.9 billion in federal funding over full four fiscal years or $725 million per fiscal year to get back on track. Yet the Corps submitted a request to the President for $350 million for FY22. That is less than half of what's necessary, and apparently less than they have the capacity to spend on Everglades restoration in this fiscal year. During our FY22 budget hearing with the Corps, and I'd like the members to know that this happened, the Chief of Engineers and Commanding General Spellman told us, and I quote, we're going to fund this to its full capability. That's a word that all are familiar with. He told our subcommittee that the Corps would be requesting all the funding it could spend in FY22 for Everglades restoration. Mr. Diaz Ballard and I now have reason to believe that the Corps misrepresented its capability for Everglades restoration to the Energy and Water Subcommittee during our hearing under direct questioning. And it appears that the agency may be trying to purposely keep information regarding its capability for Everglades restoration from the Florida congressional delegation. And I still have not been able to get the Corps to tell me what it can actually handle for Everglades in FY22. It is now abundantly clear that this agency is playing politics with the taxpayer dollars we appropriate. Madam Chair, it is beyond improper and disrespectful for an agency to keep budgetary information from Congress. We are a co-equal branch of government, the Article I branch of government, and we control the power of the purse. We are the guardians of taxpayers' hard-earned dollars, not the Corps. My office has spent the past few months trying to work with the Corps for this appropriation cycle, and it's been like pulling teeth to get correct or timely information from this agency. I imagine the Chairwoman Captor has had her own struggles with trying to work with and get information from the Corps, and I know other members have had problems with their own Corps projects as well. This is an agency that consistently bites the hand that feeds it. So what I would propose to my friend from across the aisle, my dear and longtime friend, is that we really need to unite and join efforts in a bipartisan fashion to rein in the core and reassert our congressional power of the purse over this agency, an agency that cannot seem to give straight answers to senior members of the subcommittee that writes the bill that funds it. And it's not the first time or even a recent problem. It has occurred during both Democratic and Republican administrations. I'd like to work with my friend across the aisle to ensure that the rest of the Everglades restoration funding gets into subsequent infrastructure legislation. The best way to address this issue is through whichever infrastructure vehicles Congress decides to advance, just like we included major funding for Everglades restoration in the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act in 2009. And finally, I appreciate the help that Chairwoman Kaptur and her staff have given my office in trying to tame this brazen bureaucracy. I hope we can continue working together on these issues. In closing, while I can't support my friend's amendment today, I do appreciate and understand the reason and spirit in which he offered it. Thank you, and I yield back the balance of my time. Mr. Palazzo. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to yield my time to uh, my colleague uh, from Florida. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I, I'm trying to see if we can reach a, a solution here. So as, as my colleague from Florida said, there, there have been, and I mentioned that in, in my opening statement on this issue, there have been some uh, different answers as to how much can actually be spent uh, this year. Now, the state of Florida has told me, and I, I actually haven't even been able to tell my colleague from South Florida, Washington Schultz, that uh, the Corps is capable of spending $457 million. 457, that's a different number, $457 million. And that's looking at the integrated delivery schedule and knowing that the state is putting in $253 million for uh, fiscal year uh, 2020, this number adds up. So uh, in, to, to try to move things forward, we could do a couple of different things, Madam Chair Owen. We could, with unanimous consent, we could change the amendment uh, to the $475 million. Um, I, and I don't know if that's something that the, the, the chair, uh, the, chair, the subcommittee chairwoman would be uh, willing to, uh, to take up. And I understand that, uh, you know, because I look forward to working with her and there's strong, I know that she supports it. I know that uh, I think the subcommittee supports it and the committee supports it. I think the real number now is $457 million, 
according to the state. So the gentleman yield? What they're doing. Yes, please. Thank you. And I, I appreciate the gentleman's. Um, uh, I was yes. just asking for the gentleman. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I thank the gentleman from, for yielding. Um, very clearly, we are in a shifting sands situation where we do not have a clear and accurate picture of exactly how much the Corps is able to spend because they haven't been truthful with us or forthcoming. And I can appreciate the state of Florida's uh, point of view on how much might be possible, but we do have a real opportunity going forward to make sure that we can fund even more significant uh, expanded funding for Everglades restoration in our upcoming infrastructure legislation that, uh, that we know will be coming in some form. So regardless of the number that we put in to this amendment, we're still putting it into an account but, uh, under your proposal where we have no guarantee that it will be spent on Everglades restoration. So unfortunately, the place that the gentleman is proposing to place the, the, the funding doesn't ensure that we actually will have the funding spent on Everglades, both because the poor core can't be trusted and because they have the full discretion in this account to spend the money as they say fit on environmental projects. I I mean, if I may, if I may, I don't know if I have any time left. I, I, I take that that I probably don't. So. Well, why don't you conclude? Because I'd like to recognize the, the chair of the yeah. subcommittee. Again, so we're talking about now a, a much lower number, and so I want to be helpful. And I know that I know that the uh, that, that the chairwoman chairwoman wants to be helpful. So again, we could either, and this is a real number because this is what the state is putting in, um, or. Again, in, in interest of time, here's the other thing that I would that would I would offer then is if I could continue working with the chairwoman uh, to to make sure that because I think there is a commitment to try to do better uh, on this. Uh, I look forward to working with the chairwoman. If if I could get the commitment with of the chairwoman that we'll continue to work on this to see what the actual number is, what can be spent because we want to make sure that, that that we only put as much as can actually be spent. Uh, um, with that, I'm willing to then obviously withdraw, but I do need a commitment that, because I'm very disappointed in the fact that the administration was not very aggressive. I think you're hearing from those of us here in the committee, we want to be more aggressive, uh, and I look forward to working with the chairwoman if she would be willing to do so. All right. Well, first of all, it's very generous for the uh, gentleman to do that. Uh, I think uh, Congressman diaz Ballard is a very effective spokesperson uh, for the Everglades, as is uh, Congresswoman Wasserman Schultz. Um, this is very, very complicated because of the increasing pressures on the core uh, that include the Everglades, but go far beyond the Everglades. The kinds of natural disasters that we are experiencing as a country, uh, they are working as hard as they can with the staff that they have. I don't want to say that they're perfect. I will have found uh, we accept the fact that you will withdraw your amendment. We will work with you. We have a systemic issue in the Corps in that the vast majority of the thousands of professionals that they hire are largely civil engineers, and I have nothing against civil engineers, uh, but they need many more environmental engineers uh, on their staff, in my opinion, to deal with the uh, changing nature of uh, what we deal with uh, the environment in our country. And so the Everglades is as much an environmental engineering project as, as it is a civil engineering project. This is facing us in many places in the country uh, where we have to figure out what to do with um, erosion, with resiliency, with what you've heard about here today from so many members who participated uh, fully uh, in this debate. So I promise the gentleman I will work with you. Uh, I was frankly disappointed in the mark that we were given, not by this committee, but by the administration, uh, and uh, in terms of the amount of funding that we were allowed to, to spend. So you're getting counter pressures in terms of what you're trying to achieve. And also, the Everglades requires a great deal of money. And I would say that the level of increase we are giving from what we have is reasonable. So we would be happy to work with you to try to get the Corps to respond and to uh, also help them uh, retool uh, to face the new challenges that America is uh, enduring from coast to coast. So. Uh, thank you very, very much. And, and with that, I'm sure when, uh, I, thank, I thank the, 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 the chairwoman. Um, so, yeah, I too was disappointed. I thought the administration could have and should have been a lot more aggressive in their support of funding for Everglades restoration. Uh, I can read the tea leaves, and it's always good when the chairwoman is willing to work with you. Uh, so with that, uh, I thank you for indulgence, and I withdraw the amendment. 
The amendment is withdrawn.